Hi, this is Warren Zucker, and on behalf of Dan Eberts and myself, I want to welcome you to the very first TypeMonkey tutorial. TypeMonkey is a kinetic type generator for After Effects. It's very intuitive, and I want to show you exactly what you need to do to get up and running, and that's what this tutorial is about. So let's get started. After you've installed TypeMonkey, just go into the Windows menu and down to the Scripts area and launch TypeMonkey. And it'll pop up. You might want to dock it. And all you have to do here is go into the text box where it says enter text here, paste your text into there, or you can type it. Click do it and watch Type Monkey work. We're going to watch this real time so you can get an idea of how fast it is. What it's doing is it's generating the words and a control layer that the words are parented to. Each control layer is then parented to the one above it. A camera is generated that will move from the center point of one control layer to the next. And that's it. It's that simple. Now there's a ton of ways of tweaking the layouts and the timing. If you really want to know more, check out the next tutorial. This tutorial focuses on how to manually adjust the timing and layout of the Type Monkey composition. Once you've created your animation, remember, if you want to see multiple variations, you can click Undo It and Do It as many times as you want. You'll notice that Type Monkey has generated a timing control layer that has markers evenly distributed over the length of the work area. Each marker is labeled with the word associated with it. You can globally adjust the timing of the entire animation by accessing the Time Stretch panel and adjusting it as you would any layer. But here's the cool part. Since the markers are dynamically linked to the control layers and the camera, all you have to do is slide the markers and the timing of the type and the camera will adjust along with it. Simple. I'll just adjust the timing between Type Monkey and Kinetic Type Generator and After Effects and let the monkey do it. And there you go. Introducing Type Monkey, pause, kinetic type generator for After Effects, pause, let the monkey do it. To manually adjust the layout, it's easiest to unshy the layers and select the layer you want to move, rotate, or resize. Since all the words are linked, anything that appears after the word will be adjusted with it. So we'll make some adjustments. We'll move it, do a little resizing, and rotate it. I'm going to just speed things up a little bit just to save some time. Remember, since this exists in 3D space, you can also rotate it on the X and the Y axis. All right, so let's see how this looks. Okay, pretty cool. So that's it, the basics of manual adjustments. Now, you'll have a lot more control over the layout and speed in the control panels, and I'll go over those in detail in future tutorials, but those are the basics. The next tutorial we'll be covering is the text box. When you open TypeMonkey, you'll notice a large text box at the top of the control panel. Just type or paste your text in there. If you click this button here, an info box will pop up, revealing a series of very important key commands that you can use to help control the layout and timing of your TypeMonkey composition. Without any of these key commands, TypeMonkey will go wild, which is fine, it does amazing stuff on its own, but you might want to have a little bit more control than that. I'll go over each one and show you what they do. First, the caret key. This will put a pause after a word. The length of the pause is determined by the total number of markers Type Monkey has to put down. The more markers, the shorter the space. The more carrots you put in there, the longer the pause. It will also skip a marker on the timeline, which is really convenient in helping to organize the timing layer. Putting gaps in key places helps separate sections. The second section represents a group of commands that helps control the layout. Square brackets at the start and end of a group We'll tell TypeMonkey that these belong together. It will treat them as one horizontal line, same size and same baseline, but each word animates on individually. If you have multiple colors selected in the palette, 
each word will be a different color. Curly brackets stack the words vertically. All the words are treated individually just like square brackets, just stacked vertically. Keep in mind you can nest square brackets in curly brackets, but not the other way around. The last command is the vertical bar. It's similar to the square brackets, but goes in between individual words. TypeMonkey will treat these words as one word and animate them on together, all with a consistent size and color. That's it, the basics of TextBox. Get to know those commands and we'll help you start taming the type monkey. Okay, next up is the layout box tutorial. The layout section controls the physical attributes of the type. Most of this is pretty self-explanatory, but let's go through it. All caps. With this box checked, all the text in the text box will be in uppercase. If unchecked, it will be in whatever case you use in your copy. Font size. It's set to random by default. The range of size is indicated by the minimum and maximum boxes below. If constant is selected, it will only allow you to use one size. Spacing. This indicates the amount of distance between words. Rotation probability. This is where you can enter the chance your text will rotate 90 degrees on the z-axis. Each rotation will have a minimum of four words. This lessens the chance that the camera will rotate too wildly from one word to the next. Color palette. This defaults to one color, white, but you have the option of mixing up to four other colors. Just click the box and select your color. The text will be assigned the colors in order, not randomly. To deselect a color, just uncheck the box below. The next box is the type animation box. There are 18 different styles or moves that TypeMonkey has to pick from. You can see this list by scrolling down the style box. By default, it's set to random, but you can select a specific style to apply to all the type by selecting it from the list. Speed indicates how fast the move takes place. There's four options to choose from, fast, medium, slow, and sloth. By default, it's set to fast. Keep in mind that changing the timing in the time control layer by moving the markers does not affect the type animation speed. It just sets it farther apart. A visual guide to each type animation style as well as the animation speed is on our website at www.typemonkey.net. The next box, the marker box, as well as the caret key command in the text box, is a place that manages how the markers will be laid out on the time control layer. As with any project, if you're dealing with a long composition and hundreds of markers, some thought should be put into it before starting. Would it be easier to break it into several compositions? Maybe editing the text and just using some keywords would be a good idea. There's a number of techniques that you can use before you actually start laying down the markers. Without making any adjustments, TypeMonkey will evenly space the markers over the length of the work area. If you haven't adjusted the work area, then it will use the entire composition. Using the work area controls in the timeline window is ideal for working with projects that have a fixed time span, such as a song or a voiceover. TypeMonkey will begin and end with a space, not a marker, so a lot for that when you're setting the beginning and end of your workspace. The purpose of the marker sync checkbox is to tell TypeMonkey to align the markers with an existing marker layer. Marker sync is perfect in case you've spent time adjusting the timing markers but need to rebuild for some reason. When undoing a composition, TypeMonkey will ask you if you want to save the existing marker layer. Click yes and then select that as the sync layer for your next build and then click do it. Each marker will sync up with its corresponding marker sequentially. If you don't have enough markers on the guide layer, TypeMonkey will refuse to build the composition. It's no problem to have too many markers on the guide layer, you just can't have not enough. Also, there's a few audio to marker scripts out there that will lay down a marker at every beat or several beats. These are amazing for automatically syncing music to your kinetic type. The monkey cam is the last box in the control window. This box, when selected, will create a camera that's dynamically linked to the text animation. Change the text layout 
and the camera will change with it. You can also create a layout that doesn't have a camera by unchecking the Include Camera box. The three sections that make up the Monkey Cam control box are Movement, Auto Rotate, and Auto Frame. Movement is broken down into four options, Smooth Stop and Go, Smooth Constant, Linear Stop and Go, and Linear Constant. All of these are automatically in sync with whichever speed is selected in the Type Animation control. I won't go over these in depth at this point, but you can see what they do and reference them on our website. Auto Rotate will rotate the camera with the type. This can be turned off if you want the type to rotate separately from the camera or not at all. Auto Frame keeps the type at a consistent horizontal margin from word to word. For example, the monkey cam will pull back on a long word and push in on a short one. There's four different options to choose from. Loose, medium, tight, and... You can also turn it off. Monkey Cam also has an update button. So you can change settings after the composition has been generated. This is useful when experimenting with different camera moves. So that's about it. An overview of Type Monkey. If you've made it this far, congratulations. I'll be going through some in-depth projects in upcoming tutorials, so keep an eye out for that. On behalf of Dan Eberts and myself, Oren Zucker, thanks for watching and enjoy your Type Monkey.